What's up guys, JBS here. And today we'll be reviewing about the Samsung Tab S7FE, which I've been using for quite a while now. It's the lower spec on their S7 lineup, and I'm interested in how well it performs on my drawings. So why did I decide to get this one instead? One main point is the price. This tablet is quite cheaper compared to its other versions, which are the S7 and the S7 Plus. I plan on using this one as a backup tablet, so I'm hoping it could perform really well since the drawing experience will be our main focus for this review. So let's have a quick unboxing to see what are the main things included. Oftentimes, price point equates to quality of the product. The cheaper it is, the cheaper it feels, but not on this one. This tablet, though cheaper compared to its other version, which is the S7 and the S7 Plus, didn't cut short in terms of quality. First, let's talk about the design. This tablet has an aluminum body and satin finish which feels premium. The thin and light profile adds to its elegant build and won't wear your wrist if you're using this for a long while. As you can see here, the profile is so thin making the switch and the deck looks like a brick. The power button and the volume racks can be found on this side, and I really like how subtle it protrudes from the surface. I just wish they could have separated the power button similar to the iPad Pro to avoid mispressing the power as a volume rack. There are two speakers that can be found on both sides which are powered by AKG, so you can expect good quality sound for your listening or watching experience. It's quite unfortunate that they reduced this from 2 to 4 compared to the previous version which is the S6, but it's still quite good though. The main camera is located in here, and I like how small it is since I don't really use it that much. It is slightly embossed, not causing too much tilt when you lay it on a flat surface without the cover. The secondary camera is located on the upper middle portion of your screen on landscape mode, which is great when using for self-portrait, it won't have that weird positioning on the frame. For the S Pen, it's quite an improvement in terms of ergonomics compared to the previous version. This one leans towards a real pen or pencil profile compared to its uh, previous version for the S6. One thing to note is that this pen doesn't have those air gesture or, you know, remote function switch you'll find on the other pen. I don't really use those features anyway, so it doesn't bother me at all. One thing I do wish that they included for this one is the additional nibs for the pen, which unfortunately you don't have in here. So make sure that you take care of this pen since there are no extras included. This tab includes a cover stand and a keyboard, which I really like. It feels premium and has a matte finish to it, so it doesn't attract those fingerprints once you're holding it. You can attach the tablet on its part of the cover and hold it steadily. Even better compared to its previous version S6 which is really great since there are instances where I will use the S6 as a laptop and sometimes it will fall behind since the connection of the cover to the back surface will wear out over time. You can connect the tablet on the middle part of the cover to access the keyboard and this allows you to use this like a laptop. I really like how this stands looks overall and the design form is really elegant and premium. It creates this cool triangular tunnel once you are in a laptop mode and in it's extremely sturdy. Never did I have an issue on this one falling off while using and it's really impressive. This is what I like about the Samsung and they give you so much more than what you pay for and this tablet is no exception. You can attach the pen here on the middle part of the cover and one thing I do hope is that they still include the back attachment for the pen so you don't have to detach and reconnect the cover from the tablet from time to time just to access the pen. Another thing to note is that although the keyboard feels premium and very responsive, I do wish they included the touchpad in here so you don't need to use the screen to hover around the apps instead of uh, using the arrow keys to navigate. But overall, the build quality, responsiveness, and reliability of this cover stand and keyboard is top notched and I don't think you can get this quality for this price point on other tablets and the thin profile lightweight satin finish on the tablet feels premium and won't wear out your wrist if you're using this for a long period of time. Last but not the least, the improved ergonomics of the pen that makes it uh, more natural to hold uh, because of the closer form factor to it for a real pen and pencil. So now let's take a look 
with the draw experience and how well it performs on this tablet. There will be two main applications that I will be testing it with. First will be the Medibank Paint and the other one will be Clip Studio. But before we start, I would just like to point out that the refresh rate of this tablet is at 60Hz compared to its other versions which are the S7 S7 Plus at 120Hz. So with that in mind, let's proceed. You can see from the test there is a tiny bit of delay when it comes to the responsiveness of the pen on how slow or flashy applies the strokes. This is probably due to the 60Hz as I mentioned before, as this tablet has half the refresh rate compared to its other version the S7 S7 Plus. You can see that it's quite more noticeable when using airbrush, but you can actually lessen it by downsizing the brush size so you will have a smoother result. But the bigger size of the brush the more noticeable it is, especially on faster strokes as seen on the test. On the pressure sensitivity, I'm really impressed on how accurate it displays the amount of pressure I apply on the pen, especially on how I draw. I normally use repetitive strokes just like on manual sketching to better convey the perception that is made by hand. So good pressure responsiveness is very important to me. You'll also notice that smooth tapering transition from thick to thin at the end of each stroke which are very impressive. Other tablet may have inaccurate results regarding this because of the less pressure sensitivity and I'm glad that this tablet is performing very well in that regard. So far, all of the results are quite good with some noticeable delay on the airbrush. But let's do an actual drawing procedure so we can see on how accurate it performs on illustrations. First, I will use a normal speech to let guys see the pacing of the strokes on how it displays on actual drawing pace. I decided to have a quick coloring procedure from the eyes since it's one of the most attracting features of a person, especially in anime drawing. Because of the exaggerated form, the better depict the emotion it conveys. So let me just finish it quickly and I'll be back in a couple of seconds. As you can see here, it's performing really well despite having a 60 hz refresh rate as I mentioned before. This will just need some getting used to if you're coming from someone who used a 120 hz often but this is your first time, 60 hz will definitely be not a problem. The response of the pen is accurate when it comes to displaying the proper thickness of the lines as well as the proper opacity of the strokes in accordance to the amount of pressure you apply. Overall, I'm very pleased with how this tablet performs along with its compatibility with the app Medibank Paint. So now let's proceed on the next application which will be Clip Studio. So now we're in the Clip Studio Paint. But before we start, I'd like to point out that the Clip Studio Paint drawing output is different from a comic compared to an illustration. So what do I mean by this? Let's check it in here. You'll notice that in the comic section, the ink output barely has pressure sensitivity when it comes to opacity based on the amount of pressure you put on the pen. This means that the output will just from thin with very less color value differences. I think Clip Studio has a good reason for this and it's probably because when making manga, the lines are treated more to have a flat value and lines to save costs on printing. That's why when you see shadings on manga prints, the gray fill or shades are made of pen made dots to save costs which are quite practical considering the amount of drawings and pages needed to produce a single volume manga. You can see here in sample test, I just an airbrush but instead of creating a gradient shade, the output is still on a flat color value and it does make sense. I just wanted to share this info since you might get confused on why it's acting like this. Compared to the illustration, if you're a first time Clip Studio user, it might confuse you. So now let's go to the illustration test so we can see the full capacity on how well it performs when it comes to full illustrations. You can see here that it's already displaying the correct color value gradients of the airbrush compared to before. Similar to the Medibank Paint, both apps struggle when it comes to big size of airbrush, especially in faster strokes. So if you plan on using airbrush with big sizes, make sure to apply them on slower pace to avoid some delay when you are drawing. For the pressure sensitivity, it performs quite good as well. It somewhat creates this tapering issue sometimes, but it's not too noticeable in actual drawing procedure, so you can definitely get by on this. The output on the pressure sensitivity of the pen in accordance to the app is good as well. It seems like Medibank has a much better accuracy of transition from thick to thin towards the end of each strokes as shown before. As you can see here on the actual drawing procedure, I did the exact same coloring process to experience whether similar drawing procedure may vary just because of the app and I'm glad that it performs really well same as the Medibank paint. It's quite impressive since so Clip Studio is a more demanding drawing app compared to Medibank. So whether you're using Clip Studio or Medibank for illustrations, you'll be quite happy since both applications has good compatibility with this tablet. Both drawing apps perform quite good when it comes to illustrations, but Clip Studio has more flexibility and offers 
we have planned to create manga works and complex 3D tools which I'll discuss next. So here are some initial draft panels of manga pages I'm working on. You can see that it can handle quite well if you have multiple tabs open and several amounts of panels at the same time which is impressive on how much load it can handle with the specs and price of this tablet. So now let's take a look at the 3D model references in Clip Studio. Clip Studio Paint offers a wide variety of 3D model tools which can aid you if you want to make your works much more efficient. Although useful as it is, you will now experience some quite delay when using this feature. You experience this delay as you modify these models for your post references and can sometimes be annoying. One thing I would suggest to use one model at a time to avoid too much stress on the tablet. You can probably get by with two but you should limit it as much as possible to avoid experiencing too much lag on your work procedures. I would suggest to turn off the model references on your layer once done using so the model can lighten the delay issues you're experiencing. It's good that Clip Studio includes all of these tools and all-in-one package for you to experience a holistic process for your works be it either illustrations, manga, or 3D works. I just hope that they can find ways to lessen the delay when using the 3D tools on future updates. But overall, I'm impressed on how it performs on this tablet. So that's it for the review and my thoughts on this tablet. Majority of my experience are definitely good on this one. There are several points that will convince me that this was a good purchase like the included S Pen, cover, and keyboard stand which are all an upgrade for me in terms of quality and ergonomics compared to the earlier versions. Although specs are not in the highest regard compared to the S7 S7 Plus, which has a double refresh rate and higher processing power, it doesn't mean that it won't deliver good performance. As I have shown, it just struggles somehow 3D works and that's it. But if you're going for illustrations in manga, this tablet will definitely give you the performance needed to fulfill those tasks. It's hard to find equipment that can perform this well with all the additional stops included, with the ability to draw anywhere, and can access a computer all in one. And for this price point, I definitely think Think it's worth it. So that's it. I hope you guys find this video helpful, informative. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and see you guys on the next one.